You see this keyboard? It looks flat. It can't be a custom keyboard, right? And originally, I thought I was going to hate it. But what if I told you that this video is a story of how I grew to love a low profile keyboard and why you should maybe love it as well? And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Hippio, a low profile keyboard? Why do I even care about that? That's not a real custom keyboard. But what if I told you that it thawks? Well, howdy, hey, I'm Hippio Tech. Grab a cup of coffee and don't worry, I'll explain everything. Now, if you're new to my channel, I've spent the last couple years reviewing a ton of different custom keyboards, from ones that cost $20 to ones that cost a thousand. However, in that time, a lot of you have noticed a big gap in my content, and you've definitely let me know about it. No low profile keyboards, Hippio? What? Well, to be perfectly honest with you, I just thought I would hate them. I was like, why would I ever want a keyboard that's like less keyboard? That sounds really lame. So out of my own personal biases, I've just avoided them. But then recently, I just got an email from Lowfree. Now, they really wanted me to look at their keyboards. And at first, I just ignored their emails. But then I looked at their reviews on Amazon. And obviously, you can rig these, but somebody said they sound thawky and creamy? Like, that can't be real, right? So Lofri offered to sponsor this video, but I told them you can't sponsor it unless I've actually tried them. So they sent out the keyboards and then I went and tried it. And holy moly, was I impressed. Like, have I been thinking about keyboards wrong the whole entire time? Now, by the end of the video, I hope to share some of my thoughts on why this keyboard might be a good fit for you or why it might definitely not be a good fit for you. As low profile keyboards are still pretty polarizing and they're definitely not for everyone. And before I get into how it made me type faster and other interesting tidbits, let's talk about the accessories. You get this very interesting angled cable. It's a USB-C cable and um, nothing oh my God. else. There's no other accessories. This might look like my cat because it is my cat. There, there weren't any other accessories in the box. I, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a little bit blown away. Not even like a keycap and switch puller. Now, this keyboard starts at 159 US dollar. Now, that might sound a little bit expensive compared to like a $30 chiclet keyboard, but for reference, Logitech is charging 120 bucks for a keyboard that looks a lot less premium. Granted, it is still made out of aluminum. Now, at first feel, this thing is pretty lightweight, which I guess would be good if you're packing it with you. There's also this very nice badge on the side that says low free, and I really like the screws on the side of the board. However, this does mean that the board is going to be pretty difficult to disassemble. And to be perfectly honest with you, because of this, I just really don't recommend modding this thing, and I give it a low modability score. Also, as you might have seen on screen, it comes in two different colors, a white version and a black version, and it also comes with ghost linear or phantom tactile switches that I'll talk about more later. They're made out of palm, which is crazy. Now, as far as the actual design of the keyboard goes, it's very simplistic and reminds me of an Apple product, which honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of Apple products. And there's the weight on Mr. Coffee Scale for you, by the way, 1.3 pounds compared to a quote unquote normal custom keyboard like the QK65 that's four pounds. This is quite a lot lighter. Flipping it around to look at the back, though, you do notice that there are rubber bump on so this thing doesn't slide around your desk. However, it's missing flippy feet which honestly, I feel like flippy feet would be a really good thing on a low profile keyboard where you can have it take up more space if you want it to or adjust the typing angle. Also, we see a little switch for Bluetooth, turning it on and off. This would make it so you can connect it to something like your iPad. However, I do really wish that it came with a 2.4 gigahertz connection as Bluetooth just tends to be really janky. I personally didn't run into any issues using it Bluetooth, but I'm also not a super power user. However, speaking of issues, this board is definitely no stranger to those. <laughs> when some people say they like shine through LEDs, I don't think this is what they meant, as the white version with the white keycaps shine through very, very badly. This is honestly quite a shame, as I think the white version ends up looking a lot cleaner, but with the LEDs on, I mean, like, look at the black version. LEDs are on, nothing. It doesn't look bad at all. I don't really know what they were thinking if there's just not enough diffusion with these switches because the switches just kind of let the light through like willy nilly. But I think with the LEDs shining through, it leads to a very, very tacky look on the white version of the board, which I am not a fan of whatsoever. I'm not really sure how they'd go about fixing this on the white keycaps, like I guess make slightly thicker keycaps, but then they're low profile keycaps, so I don't really know how they'd go about that. But my solution is gonna be to just turn it off, <laughs> yeah. Now, as I mentioned before, this is one of my first ventures into low profile keyboards. Now, I've tried hundreds and hundreds of mechanical keyboards and custom keyboards, and this general 75% style with a bit of a chunky front is what I tend to lean towards. With this side by side with the low free, I mean, 
you're looking at basically like half or maybe even a third of the surface area being occupied. Like not surface area, but height. I think you get what I mean. These things are really, really thin, which means if you're packing it into a backpack because you want a more premium keyboard experience on the go, then that works pretty well. But what works even better than I thought is the typing, which I'll talk about in a minute, because these switches are genuinely incredible. I didn't think I'd ever say this, I like a low profile switch. Now this board has the option of the Kale Ghost Linears or the Kale Phantom Tactiles. These kind of feel like a cherry red and a cherry brown, except good. The tactile switches have a very, very minimal tactile bump, which I actually tend to prefer as it gives you that little bit of feedback, but you don't feel like you're fighting through a bump just to press the switch. And the linear switches do feel beautifully smooth. Now the travel distance isn't actually very far on these. So it kind of feels like you're using like a speed gaming switch and the PCB is hot swappable, meaning that you could swap other Kale hot swap switches in here. But ultimately, I think these switches are where I end up the most pleasantly surprised. Look, granted, the switches aren't the keyboard, but they are a part of the keyboard that they did choose to include. And I think they're a very good choice. These stabilizers, however, I thought would be super rattly. However, mine were actually very well factory lubed and did not tick whatsoever. There was also a clicky switch option listed on their website. However, I did not get to try that. But what I did get to try was typing on these things, which I was thoroughly impressed about. Now, at first, I thought my accuracy was going to be really, really low typing on this thing. And my first typing test, I actually blew myself away with like a 97 or 98% accuracy. I'll put it on the screen right now. Especially the black keyboard with the tactile switches felt really responsive to type on. And I was really impressed here considering I've typed on hundreds of keyboards before. Now, I'm not exactly a great typist. I don't have good typing form or anything like that. But what I was blown away by is that by three typing tests, I had already beaten my personal typing speed record. Like, what? Look at this, 112 words per minute. My record was 108, by the way, which isn't great. You know, I'm not, I'm not some 170 words per minute typist, but I do enjoy typing on keyboards. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering, Hippio, if you like typing on this thing so much, why don't you use it every day? And this is where it goes into the massive personal preference territory. One reason why you might not use it every day is because the included gasket performance is really, really lackluster. Like, sure, it's giving the keyboard an overall better sound and dampened experience, but there is no flex here if that's something that you look after. It won't have the refreshing bounce of a leaf spring keyboard or pour on gaskets. Secondly, I think the design is a little bit boring. I mean, it's clean, don't get me wrong, but one of the aspects of keyboards that I enjoy the most is customizing the keycaps. So my first thought was, all right, let me remove the keycaps off of this thing. And what if I just replace them with a different keycap? I like that the board takes up not a lot of space, but I also like other keycap options. So I put my editor through a hazing routine of removing all of the keycaps from the keyboard, but something didn't feel right. Like I felt like these switches were a little bit too close to the side of the case. I was sensing some disturbance in the force. Now there definitely are some low profile keycap sets out there, but it's hard to know if they'd fit any keyboard without actually buying them. And I tried regular keycaps and they don't work. <laughs> So if I wanted to go for the cool low profile keyboard aesthetic, but then use my own keycaps, that just wouldn't work here. And that customization aspect is something that I really enjoy. Now the Mac options are definitely great if you're someone that uses the Mac often and the switches are incredible to type on. Like this is one of the better sounding stock keyboards I've ever typed on, let alone the fact that it's a low profile one. The price is a little bit more than some of its competitors, which I think is definitely fair in this case due to how good the switches are and the pretty nice build quality to be fair. But ultimately there are some issues here that you're gonna have to look past if you wanna buy it. Most notably being the shine through through the keycaps, which is unintentional, and the fact that you can't swap the keycaps out with any of your own sets. Now, obviously I know that's a niche issue, so it's just, it's a me thing, it's a me thing, it's fine. But like, wouldn't it be cool if you could? It's also worth noting that Lofree did send me their touch keyboard and a weird mouse, which I might take a look at in a short. If you wanna see those, let me know. I'll be leaving you with the sound test and I'd like you to do your own sound test in the comments to tell me what you think of low profile keyboards. Would you get one? Do they seem like real custom keyboards to you? Like this definitely subverted my expectations big time. This keyboard wasn't perfect by any means, but I am really curious to see where they take low profile keyboards in the future. And I'm gonna have them on my radar.